outside. I'm not staying out here. It's cold and I'm uncomfortable. Reminds me of Barbenheimer, Oppenheimer, the raindrops in the water, the dawn of creation. <laughs> yeah, I am a fair weather walker. I don't like, I should have worn a heavier coat. I didn't think it was going to be this cold. I mean, it's not that bad. It's just, it's not, I'm not warm enough. But, I, I, <laughs> I can't do it. Please continue to hold to keep your place in line. So I tried to have a live today and my internet went down and apparently other people are having internet problems as well. So I canceled the live and then <laughs> right away the internet went down again. <clears throat> apparently there's a storm in the area. So guess what? I'm on hold with Rogers right now trying to see if I can fix the problem. This has been going on for a month, I think. Yeah, a month. I thought it was going to go away because they sent me a couple of messages and it hasn't gone away. And I have reached the end of my tether with my patience. Hello, everybody. Okay. Uh, where do I begin? Um... Well, uh, I had initially planned to record a video from outside. I went for a walk, but it was cold. It was cold and it was rainy. I was not properly dressed because I thought it was going to be a little bit warmer and I couldn't do it. So I came back in. Um, as I was mentioning on my member video, it's been a series of mishaps or upsets today that prevented me from doing what I had planned to do, which is fine, but I was kind of like, what is going on? What is up with this energy? Why is this happening? So when I get to that point, I stopped and I pulled back and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to repeat what I said in the other video though. So, so I was going to talk about the two worlds today because I'm noticing that quite a lot of people are aware of the two worlds, which I kind of didn't expect, which is beautiful. It really is. So, um, more people are aware of the two worlds than I anticipated. And, uh, I'm looking forward to when the two worlds collide because it should be a pretty spectacular event. And after this movie came out, Leave the World Behind, I really do feel like it's imminent. It's upon us. So there's not much time left. As I said, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what happens as a result, but I think it's going to be a beautiful event. And Okay, so what I hear through a lot of truth channels um, is that those who are awake will not um, get not get harmed by the event or what have you because because we're either on a different frequency or we're in a different mindset. We're in a different state of mind. And I have to say that I agree that that's the case. And I think too, you know, years ago, 20, was it 2017? I think I said that there's going to be an event that's going to, um, it's going to happen that's going to appeal to all the beliefs. So like whether you believe in the second coming of Jesus or aliens or what have you, there's going to be something that happens that is going to appear to each of those as if that's what it is. So each set of beliefs is going to have that, that desire or need fulfilled. It's an illusion but you know you're gonna have it fulfilled so if you're thinking that Jesus is coming it's going to appear to be that way but it's not um 
I still don't think that that's what's going to happen because this is a world of perception. And if you hold that perception, then that's what you're going to see. So for the people who are um, in the middle, I think that you're going to be fine. You're going to see the fakery and it isn't going to be an issue. But also, if you're as uh, I think it's apotheosis said, um, in the world but not of it, or of the world but not in it. <laughs> yeah, in the world but not of it. So you're observing and you're aware of the fakery and the illusion and it can't touch you. So you're not like, you're not concerned. You're just watching the story unfold. And when you are at a perception level where you realize that you can be, do, or have anything, you're, you're above all of it. You're just watching all of it unfold and it's, it's going to be a miraculous, beautiful event. And it's not really, it's not going to freak us out at all. So like if it's an event similar to what was shown in leave the world behind, I'm going to be sitting here watching it on television, laughing with a bowl of popcorn because <laughs> I'm going to find it entertaining, but in the meantime, there's going to be people on the streets freaking out, thinking that it's real and that's what's going to happen to them and they're going to participate in it. So it's, it's possible that it's going to be something like that because it's going to feel like it's real. It's going to feel like the 3d and for us, we know better, so we're not going to get involved in it. And um, those people who are in that fear zone won't even engage with us because we don't want any part in it. It's just like the Kevin Bacon character. No, don't want any part of it. You guys stay away from me. So, so yeah, I, I like I'm personally, I'm excited and, um, I think that there's really good things coming and whatever it is doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't because I'm moving out of that anyway. I'm not there anymore. I'm not in the 3D anymore in the sense of that 3D mindset is what I mean by that. And um, so those sorts of things, they're not real to me. They don't affect me. To me, it's all just a story. It's all just a, here we are in this story that's going through the leave the world behind phase. And this is what is happening. It's crumbling, it's falling to pieces. So I'm just gonna watch that part of the movie and I'm going to tend to my own part of the movie, which is sitting in a bunker watching Friends because that's the story that I prefer to watch. I prefer to watch the finale of Friends. And, uh, yeah, like the two worlds, like, it's interesting when I first heard of it, like, there's, there's many different ways to look at the two worlds, right? So like, there's the, the idea of the, um, imagination and the physical, um, the past and the future and the unmanifest and the manifest, those sorts of ways of looking at things. Personally, I see it as two separate worlds that are identical, but flipped. And when, you know, it's funny because when I was talking about, I, I was aware of there being another world and I wasn't <laughs> even more than one world, like two worlds, but, I wasn't the like, conscious of it. You know, I wasn't really thinking about what that meant. And then um, I saw a video that talked about it and I was like, well, of course, oh my gosh. <laughs> but there was stuff about it that like, I was questioning, I was like, what? Okay, I don't understand this part. Is that accurate? And then, and then it started to 
all fall into place and made sense to me. And then, so I drew the map and wrote it all out and, you know, it made sense to me. And so all of the pieces of the puzzle coming together and showing like the, the Romeo and Juliet's balcony and, you know, all of the stories are in there. You can see it. It's so powerful. It's so beautiful and so simple and yet so simple and yet so complex at the same time, which I love about this place. So it's funny because, you know, I used to say too, like a lot of times there's things that I would, I would come to know before I actually knew them. It's like, I would, I would know of say like the kingdom of heaven. I was aware of it. I, I had heard of it, but until you're in it, it's a totally different thing. So, yeah, like there's times where I know of something before I'm a, like fully knowledgeable in it, in the sense that I've experienced it. So, I, like I said, with the two worlds, I was aware of it, but I didn't put focus on it in terms of what does it actually mean. One of the things I was aware of before I experienced it was um, the Kundalini connection, like the the kundalini path manifesting in your life as a like physical thing going through those stages like i kind of knew where it was headed but until you actually go through it uh you don't know what it, the experience is actually like um so i mean it it was a gift and it was beneficial to be able to see that that was where the the path was headed it gave me some comfort and reassurance that there was like, oh, okay, so that's what it looks like and this is what happens. But when I got to the point of the 88 gate, I got impatient and I'm like, okay, what's the next stage? And then the crowning came and I was like, okay, now this is the next stage, so this should happen next. And so I started looking for it, which is never good. It's just, just like, let it happen and enjoy the ride but um yeah like there's there's quite a few things that i became aware of before i actually experienced it and the experience of it is quite different um uh, say it was like parallel universes i became aware of it and now i'm experiencing it and being out of the 3d um i was aware of it and then became an experience and it's it's interesting how how that happens and it so much more interesting when you experience it other than rather than it's just an intellectual thing an intellectual awareness so so yeah like this uh one of the things that i was aware of beforehand was people saying that, well, when you are awakened, you won't experience, you won't experience death and you won't experience this uh, event the way that 3D people do. And it wasn't put exactly like that, but that's essentially what was going on is that you get to a point where you understand, you know what this world is, it won't affect you because you know you're not really here, right? So. It's also just an illusion. It's just a story. So it's not going to affect you. And it won't affect you because you're ruler of your 3D experience. So you don't need to participate in it. And so the difference in the difference in being aware of that and then actually knowing it from being in it is totally different. You know, like that's the catastrophic side. I'm excited for where things are headed on the positive side, the rebuild side, the renewal side, the new world side. And I think that that's kind of what's happening is because in a sense, Earth is splitting and coming together at the same time. So you have the two worlds colliding, but it's also splitting at the same time. In coming together, it splits. So while the the yeah so while we're moving over to like the new world and then there's the 
uh, other world which is more technology based and more rooted in the logical, more rooted in the physical, that's the separation, but it's also the coming together of the two worlds and I guess it's kind of like, you know when you see, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting this image of like bubbles where they, they come together like this and they split off like this, it's something like that. The male and females reuniting, but in reuniting it separates as well. A world where they are together, it's the same sort of, same sort of thing that we have now only reversed. One of the things I was aware of before I actually experienced it was that um, I, I was saying that when you remember who you are and you are able to take control of your story, you may not want to. You may want to fulfill your story. And I think, you remember that Star Trek episode where they were stuck in a loop and the, the loop was scripted and all of the people that were in this casino were following this story and they found this book and they realized that they were characters in this book and one of the one of the um, Star Trek t team said well I think we have to fulfill the script I think that's why it's like you have to fulfill the script so if you don't fulfill the script then you just keep coming back which was why some of those people just kept looping and looping and looping because they weren't aware that they were in a script. So these people were aware of it, so they fulfilled the script and then it broke the spell and it let them out. And I think that's part of it. So you fulfill your script and then you have a choice. Do you want to come back or not? So now, uh, one of the things was like, you may not want to leave. You may not want to leave. And in the, when you're in the fear zone, you're like, uh, no, I want out, I'm done. And then you come to realize the true magic in this place and the love and the beauty and you get your power back and you see it in a completely different way. You may not want to leave because if you've been asleep for thousands of years, playing around as like a human, yeah, it's not that much fun. <laughs> I mean, on one level it is, but on another level, when you get your power back, it's like, wow, I can do all of this. I can do this. Let's play for a while. So you may not want to leave. And it's perfectly fine. So, but you could also still leave. So I totally now understand why you may not want to leave and why you may want to continue on your script. And, um, Personally, I know my script. I am happy to fulfill my script because I like my script. I, I like it. I find it is such a beautiful story and I want to continue on my story. And um, whether I write a new story at the end of it, um, remains to be seen. Personally, I don't see how this story could be told any other way. <laughs> I mean, okay, because it essentially is the only story there is, so I don't know how there can be any other story. There's a wide variety of iterations on how the story can be told. It would be great if, the, if it was told without all the suffering. That'd be nice. But then the suffering is what wakes you up, and the suffering isn't real, so um, does it really matter? I don't know. <laughs> does it? I, I'm excited for where things are going. I think this is going to be fun. I think this is going to be exciting. I think it's going to be quite a ride from this point on. And um, I'm looking forward to all of it. All of it. And I'm glad I have such good company on the way. So thanks for being here. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.